Hello and in this tutorial I wanted to quickly talk about smoothing. So often what we want to do is when we're modeling objects um, what we don't want is um, hard polyg uh, polygonal faces. What we want is smooth organic surfaces. Uh, now often so often students uh, or people that are modeling for the first time achieve this by creating very extremely dense meshes now dense very dense meshes are very uh, uh, very ineffective they uh, require a lot of memory to render they take a lot of processing time they're not easy to port around uh, and there is no need to have meshes as dense as that so what we can actually do is use something called smoothing so we can actually just smooth our polygons out so what I can do is uh, what you want to do is make sure that in your shading you've got uh, smooth shade all selected okay and then to apply smoothing to your cubes um, and one of the things I wanted to point out as well is uh, these are these are exactly the same size cues but their topology ie the mesh that defines them is slightly different so you can see that this is actually made up of uh, uh, just one division this is made up of uh, uh, a number of like four subdivisions for each face and then this is subdivided even further okay so you can see this is made up of a denser mesh it's the same cube but made up of a denser mesh and what you'll find is this will make the smooth mesh behave slightly differently what I'm going to do just so you can see that a bit more clearly is turn on the wireframe shader so you can see that this is the same cube but made up of slightly different meshes now to smooth a cube so to turn smoothing on what we do is we just click on highlight a cube and we just press 3 and I'm going to do that for all the cubes OK, and you can see that what it does is it just takes it, it takes the edges and it just smooths them. So you can see that because there's so uh, there's so little detail making up this mesh, it's smoothed it to the point where this is actually a sphere. OK, uh, quite a useful way of making a sphere in a way, uh, but we'll go into that uh, another time. Um, but this basically smoothed it into a sphere. Again, this has smoothed it, but not so much because of the extra subdivisions. And again, this has smoothed it, but not so much because of the extra subdivisions. So what, what I'm trying to highlight here is that there is a need to control your smoothing. Uh, and typically you control your smoothing by um, uh, by. Uh, uh, putting edges close together along the side to kind of get a sharper edge. I'll just demonstrate that if I go into my, um, I'm just going to go into my uh, component edge mode and I'm going to double click here and select this edge. And if I move this edge up, you can see how it's refining, how it's sharpening up this edge here. Okay. Um, that's only doing it to a point. What you want to do is possibly add some extra edges as well. So uh, what I might want to do is take this edge here and move that up to the edge as well, just to kind of help define that. And one of the things to be careful of is trying to refine shapes purely in the smooth view. What I do is when I'm modeling, often I'm moving between this view and that view to kind of see what I'm doing, because quite often uh, you can't see uh, clearly how you're affecting the mesh so for example if I go into if I want to try and get a hard edge on this if I turn off the smoothing select this edge and move it up okay I can see more clearly exactly what's happening with that mesh uh, I probably what I've probably done is probably messed up this edge a little bit I'm just having a look at that yeah so you can see that I've kind of messed this edge up a little bit what I need to do is I think I need to actually pull down this edge Let's see if we can do that there we go to correct it so I had actually messed up that edge there okay again because I was manipulating it in the uh, smooth view you can't really see accurately what ha what is happening to the polygon so often if you want to create a hard edge it's worth sort of manipulating it in this sort of view uh, where it's flat shaded uh, and with by pressing one and then go into the smooth view by pressing three okay and then you can see exactly what you've done to that edge and you can see that we're getting the sort of result that we want and um, just to give you an idea what that looks like, like then if I go onto this character you can see that that technique is being used a lot here where you can see that there's lots of edges um, close together so if I just let's go into so if I look at the hand here um, you can see that uh, I'm looking at it in the flat shade view at the moment 
but uh, if I press 3 you can see how so in the flat shade view I'm just going to try and dolly this in a little bit uh, you can see how we've got edges very close together um, uh, we've got uh, yeah we've got edges very close together here uh, and those are and 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 when we apply the smoothing, you can see how that's helping to create a crease around here, or a sort of a sharp edge uh, around here. Not so sharp; we don't want it uh, infinitely sharp, but you know, but, but it, it to be reasonably rounded. Okay. Um, an interesting thing about edges is you don't want edges to be really, really sharp. Nothing has a, a an infinitely sharp edge, and actually having a slight round edge on there means that when you uh, do your light and you apply a specular material and you light it up, you'll get that highlight around the edge, and you'll end up with a much more natural uh, looking render than if this was just a right, you know, some right angle edges meeting up. So right angle edges meeting up might look right now. But when you start rendering it, you want to have that slight edge, that slight curve in there is really, really important. Uh, but you'll learn that more as we go into kind of topology and how that relates to subdivisions.